You've loved and feared my next guest in movies such as Psycho and Friendly Persuasion, Crimes of Passion. His latest film is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde type film. It's called Edge of Sanity, and we have a clip. Birthday girl? the good part you know uh, um, some of, speaking of, of reviews you know Tony was uh, was talking about the reviews that he got for for his film mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes reviewers don't understand mm -hmm. that there is a close correlation between between horror for instance and in this case comedy mm -hmm. uh, and and this audience I, I was waiting to see if they would have an you know like an entertained let's put it that way an entertained reaction uh, uh, yeah. to this clip and I thought they did you know I yeah, mean and that's you know what, what it's all about you know it's interesting I was watching people some of them scream and then they laughed at themselves for yeah. screaming but isn't but that that's that's the highest that's high quality you know to be able to to get an audience to enjoy being afraid mm -hmm. and to laugh at it at the same time i mean i, I consider that the uh, the top if you, if you can do that it's it's wonderful what attracted you to this particular film well i i like the the uh the twinkle in the director's eye. I got the idea that, that he was interested also in making a film that, that wasn't strictly straight on uh, horror or, or, dram or, or drama. And I, I felt that he was gonna be interested in the idea to make it uh, a funny too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so basically now, am I right in assuming that this movie, as opposed to just being a Dr. Jekyll and Hyde type situation, mm -hmm. Cocaine is the stimulus for this whole situation. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're always seeing a, uh, Dr. Jekyll in his, in his uh, lab kind of mixing up this foaming uh, potion of stuff. You never really get to know what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. And they, they had it written that way, in fact, at first. And I, I thought it was maybe n wouldn't be as good as to, as to substitute something for it that might be uh, more timely. And then I remembered, you know... Uh, well, in the time of Sherlock Holmes, for instance, he was he was experimenting with 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 cocaine. Now, he was a fictional character, of course, uh, but it seemed to me perfectly reasonable and logical, and it turned out to be when I did a little bit of research that Dr. Jekyll had been uh, working with cocaine as a as an anesthetic, mm -hmm. and uh, it just goes a little bit wrong for him in this picture. He. Um, he, his laboratory monkey, you, you hear him uh, uh, kind of uh, chippering away in the background on that, on that clip. It's kind of confusing for people who haven't seen the picture. But uh, he, he, he tips over the, uh, the Bunsen burner uh, too close to the, to the cocaine. So uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll ends up kind of smoking this stuff inadvertently. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a tragedy. Right. As it is, as it is so often, too often in 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 the lives of some people we know and people we observe. So there's a deep-seated message sure, here, also. Sure, sure. And of course, that's where where a message should be. It's got to be deep-seated. I, I don't like message pictures that deliver you the message straight on uh, up front. I don't think that's right. People uh, people are, who are, are willing to to spend money and take time to go out and see a movie, they, they don't want to have the the message be predominant. They want the me it's okay if the message is in there, but entertainment first, and then sneak around back and. Going, don't you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Let me ask you about the characters you play. I, I joked in the monologue about having you at my house when I bring a girl over. And because well, that's a compliment, you know. Yeah, because yeah. you convince people. And I was wondering, do you ever look at your work and does it scare you? You know, I mean, do you look and say, oh, 
Wow. I, I guess, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the film Psycho was made without me, with, with, with doubles and stuff like that, because, uh, because Hitchcock was working long hours, and, and I had to be in New York a lot of the time while they were hey, making no, that film. No. Yeah, I did. And, uh, How about the, the killing stuff? No, no, no. I, I think most of this audience probably knows that, too, that I wasn't did there. Did you all know that? Oh, okay. Well, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. For... <laughs> So, so when I saw those scenes, you know, those scenes of, of, uh, of outspoken of violence uh, that they had in that picture, I was uh, a little taken aback, too, because uh, I, I hadn't been anywhere near those, uh, those moments. And, and to tell you the truth, uh, traditionally in the, in the Psycho uh, sequels, the, the part of the, the, the killing mother, you know, that's, all, that's always played by someone else. Uh, yeah, a stand-in or a, oh, a, a wow. stunt double of someone else. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, it's not you I want at my house when my girl comes over. <laughs> Some other guy with a shovel. Uh, we'll come right back and talk more with Mr. Perkins. <laughs> so let's talk about you, the man. Are you, you married? Kids? Yeah, yeah. I've got two teenage, uh, two teenage boys. Mm-hmm. Do you ever take the character home? Oh, no. <laughs> no I, I think I used to do that when I was a bachelor, when I was living by myself, you know, I had kind of a self-involved existence, but there's nothing like marriage and two kids to, uh, to take you out of that and make you feel that you're really a human being and not just, a, you know, a product or a professional actor who, who dwells on himself and is constantly thinking about his own career or his own future, what's he going to do next, all the things about himself, you know, I think that can be... I think that can, that can dent your creativity, if anything. Yeah. Uh, will there be a cycle five, by the way? Five? We'll have to do four first. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're... <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, we're, 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 we're working on it, actually. Uh, uh, Psycho 4 is going to deal with, uh, with Norman's youth. Uh, Norman is a young boy, and then Norman is a teenager. Uh, as kind of remembered by the, the older Norman. Mm -hmm. mm. That'll be interesting. You ever worry about getting pigeonholed? I don't worry about it at all. Uh, I think my, my career has a certain uh, I identity and identification with, with uh, intense roles. Uh, I actually just finished a, um, uh, a pilot for a, a half-hour comedy series. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though the role is some, uh, somewhat similar, it's a, uh, a, a writer of, of horror fiction. And his, his domestic situation, which, which supplies the comedy, kind of uh, gets into conflict with his, his real and imagined, the monsters that he, that he writes about. It's, it's very funny. You know, I was watching TV the other night, and I saw you take an axe from over the mantle. Oh, that behind. was it? That was, it. was it funny? Yeah, it was, oh, okay. it was, it was, it was I didn't know what I was watching. Yeah, that, that, that was the, the pilot of the, uh, the series. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. Are your kids into acting at all? Well, I don't know. Uh, we just went uh, down. My wife and I took them took them down to uh, to spring training in Phoenix. Uh, we were watching the, the the ball games down there, the the, the pre uh, preseason games. Uh, I think they're really more into into baseball right now than they are into acting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah your wife's a big fan of yours. So. Oh, gee, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. But um, so, yeah, I can't. Four, five, cycle four. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Cycle, <laughs> cycle four. Interesting. Now, how did you start in the business? I started in, in summer stock, mm -hmm. you know, uh, painting scenery and, and nailing sets together. And, and maybe some, uh, about halfway through the week, the, guy, the director would come out and he'd be looking at the, at the apprentices, you know, all covered with paint and stuff like that. And they'd say, you, can, can, can you handle lines? You know, and you'd say, yeah, well, I can try. You know, they'd kind of get, scrape the paint off you and say, now you got to, you know, dress up, be good. And, uh, you know, working like that, working with people, professional people, uh, people who who are, who are dedicated to, to getting a play on, a new play on every week, and then yeah. forgetting it and getting a new one on after that. Uh, I had several years of that as I was a schoolboy. Uh, you know, I was only about 14, 15 at the time. I think I think that gave me a great deal of respect for show business, respect for the for the art of, of acting, the, the creation of acting, watching people having to do it in a hurry, you know, having to be good, uh, supporting each other, uh, encouraging each other. That's always been a very strong part of the whole business to me, the, the camaraderie about it. You know, I don't, I don't go for this uh, me and me only stuff in the, you know, competitive school of acting. That's not really my style. Mm -hmm. The first things you did, now, 
How did you know you had a knack for the type of psycho stuff that you do? I didn't. I I started as a as a as a comedian in in, in get in, out of no, here. No, no, really, in in in, in, in comedy roles. Yeah, uh, in in doing those those uh, summer those summer shows. They were all they were all light comedy. Mm -hmm. In fact, most most of the shows that I'd done, most of the movies I'd done, had been on the on the kind of the gentle side before uh, Hitchcock uh, cast me in Psycho. Mm -hmm. I see, I can't see you in a comedy. What, what kind of comedy did you do? Well, kind of, you know, verbal, sophisticated comedy, you know, language, language yeah. comedy. Uh, comedy that takes, you know, diction and, and attention to each word, you know. Comedy that, that each word has to be uh, enunciated clearly so that people can really understand what you're doing. Wow. Mm. See, I, well, that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. I thank you for coming here. Hey, me too. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Anthony Perkins. We'll be right back with Scott LaRoe.